with John Masters of Red Hat. John, you're a principal software engineer, um, and we're at Lenaro Connect, and we're in Hong Kong. I know. But I don't really want to talk about Hong Kong. What I want to talk about is something that you spoke about in the opening plenary um, yesterday um, with the uh, Fedora Arm project. Uh -huh. Can you tell viewers a little bit more about that project, why you're excited about it, and where it's going? Yeah. So, um, well, first, um, I think I should put a shout out to all the members of the Fedora community. Um, because the Fedora Arm project is bigger than just me or bigger than just Red Hat. Um, but, you know, Fedora Arm is um, a, a community effort to uh, port Fedora to the Arm architecture. Um, and the, the goal is to bring it up, to be on the par or on level with um, x86 in terms of its uh, you know, support commitment uh, in the Fedora community, um, in terms of its focus, in terms of its... Um, features, um, really bring it up to, to parity with x86. So uh, it's a really exciting project. Um, I've been involved personally for about a year at this point. Um, and you know, my, my friend uh, Chris Tyler, who's here as well, um, he's been involved at Seneca College for um, the last several years, uh, running the build system, getting the initial version of um, Fedora up and running on ARM. Um, and we live in exciting times, right? So we've got um, bigger and more exciting ARM systems coming. We've got um, you know, more general purpose, less mobile focus um, in some areas. The first server systems, um, the 64-bit architecture. It's going to be exciting. And you, you spoke in your talk um, about Fedora and, mm -hmm. and, you, and Fedora being the community's arm side yes, of, yes. Of, of Red Hat. Um, how does that parallel with Red Hat's vision of where you're going with ARM? Are we good with ARM? So, I mean, I guess the, the, the sort of official line that we have when it comes to ARM is that we see it as an emerging technology. Um, clearly, if you look at the, the, the numbers of systems that ship uh, with an ARM processor, um, someone was telling me, I think ARM shipped, what, 4 billion processors in the first quarter of this year? Yeah, well, were you so, there for the opening plenary? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's... that's I thought, you know, last year it was, what, one for every person on the planet, and this year we're looking at, if that, if that continues, you know, 16 billion, that, that's just obscene, the number there. So, but, you know, a lot of them are in these little gadgets, like my little Fitbit here, right, which has the Cortex M0, the, the smallest ARM core. Um, and then you've got, um, you've, got, you've got your Panda boards, you've got your trim slices, you've got, um, you know, OMAP tag, or different, different kinds of, of platform there in the, embed, in the embedded and mobile space. Um, and then you've got servers, right? Which is where Red Hat, you know, people, people think Red Hat, okay, we, we, we do enterprise Linux stuff. Um, now, we don't have any particular product plans at the moment um, when it comes to ARM, but what we do do is, you know, we, we support um, Fedora on many different architectures, right? We have a Power version, we have a System 390 version, we still have a Spark version of Fedora, right? Wow. That we're still building. Uh, I don't know for how much longer. Um, so, you know, it could be that one day, um, you do see um, an enterprise release, and that would really be contingent on, you know, if ARM continues on the vector it's on in that emerging space, and if we start to get customer demand and people coming to us saying, you know, this stuff looks pretty good, why don't you do X, Y, or Z? Here's some money. <laughs> right. Let's talk, you know. And so, so maybe, maybe we, would, we would look at that. But at the moment, we're, we're, you know, we're trying not to be foolish. We're trying to say, you know, there's um, interesting stuff happening in the ARM community. And we want to be part of that. We want to track that. We want to make sure that our software runs on ARM. And of course, you know, yeah, I've, uh, shout out to Canonical. They've, they've been involved for a number of years now and very heavily associated with Lenaro in that context. And, and good for them. Um, we've had a little bit of catch up. I like to think we're, we're pretty much getting there now. Um, and, uh, you know, we look forward to the, the next year. Um, I would say in the next 12 to 18 months, we're going to be. Um, seeing Fedora uh, move into the, you know, not just the, the, the more general purpose ARM systems, but also some of the emerging 64-bit systems, and so will other distributions as well. You know, I think it's pretty exciting. Um, I know there was some kind of controversy about around, not controversy, just, you know, a little less than pleasant um, um, sentiments when, uh, I think it was... Uh, Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. came out, and mm -hmm. and um, of course, Fedora was saying, "Hey, you can you know you can run Fedora on these," and and, and 
and people were asking why can't why couldn't they run you know a bun two on them and, and and that sort of thing but i think what i'd like to ask you about is is the repo maintenance building those mm-hmm. repos mm-hmm. People think that, oh, why can't I just go and put this on this architect? Right, right. And, and depending on what ARM version you're talking about, yeah. there has to be a repo um, for that. How long does it take to repurpose a repo? Right. So, so firstly, I think with the, with the Raspberry Pi thing, uh, sometimes it's unfortunate when you, you get um, people uh, discussing and, and, and comparing distributions and saying, well, you do this and you do that, you know, we're all in this together. Exactly. Right. So, so, um, you know, and I think uh, aside from the one or two um, sort of heated, heated debates we get, um, I think in general, we work well together. And, and just to say, you know, I really like this event because um, I get to come here with a red hat hat on. I don't get shot. Um, this is not just, um, you know, a canonical event, right? Historically, it's very associated with canonical, but it's actually an open event for the community. Exactly. Um, and I really welcome that, and I've, I've, I've always felt very welcome, so, so that, that's been wonderful. Um, as far as getting you know, the software up and running on a, a new processor or a new um, target, the biggest problem in the ARM space is, <laughs> I like to call it the ARM Zoo, right? <laughs> and, and Dave Rustling, as CTO um, of Lenaro, uh, <laughs> um, often takes a jab at me for that, but, but it's true. Historically, ARM has been a zoo. There's too many possibilities. There's too many confusing terms. When you say hard float, do you mean, uh, do you mean uh, V6 with uh, VFP V2? Do you mean V7 with VFP V3? They're both hard float, and, and there's, there's, too many, there's too much reuse of terms. There's too many different confusing numbers. Is that ARM 11, ARM V11, ARM 9? What, you know, there's too many, and, and it can be very confusing to understand. So there's that, and there's, there's an education exercise, especially for people who have an x86 background um, in Fedora or other projects. And they look to ARM, and they say, what is this with all these crazy numbers? And, yeah. you know, so you have to go through an education exercise. To get Fedora up and running, or any distribution up and running, on a particular target, it takes many months because, um, you know, first you have to make the fundamental choices about what kinds of hardware you're going to support. Then you have to go through a multi-phase process of um, cross-compilation. You start building the distribution using your Intel machine, sadly, because we're still in a world where, for pure grunt power, some of the x86 systems are still faster, right? So you use some of those to get going. Then you end up building natively on ARM systems, um, and you just have to get many of them. So we have, I think, about 80 um, boards in our build farm for ARM right now. Um, Over the coming year, we're looking to replace those with some of the first enterprise ARM servers. Um, And so it's going to mean that we have much higher build performance. We can crank through rebuilds much faster. And if for some reason someone came to us and said, hey, can you support this weird combination um, you know, maybe, maybe for example, with the Raspberry Pi, we would say, well, right now we have an ARM v5 target, which runs on the Pi. Um, and some people have said, well, it might be that in a year from now, the only real target using ARM v5 would be Raspberry Pi. You know, maybe some of the folks using the little plug computers, maybe those will move to an ARM v7 architecture. Who knows, right? right. If that were to happen, and it was just the Pi remaining in another year, 18 months, um, maybe we would rebuild again and target on V6 to have something for the Pi, uh, if that makes sense. Hopefully yeah. the Pi continues, hopefully it's successful. Right. So, um, but it's, it's a very complicated process, and we've, um, we've done a good job, I think, in documenting it. And, and I do, I have to give you kudos in the Fedora community. Like, there are many times I, I turn to the wiki pages there for not necessarily the information that's mm-hmm. on them, but the pro, the process yes. the process as you say it yeah um, and and um, and how it how you how that all flows yeah. and then you tweak it a little bit based on your needs and of course give attribution backwards yeah, too, yeah, but yeah. but I but I think I think you do in you, you, you and the royal we the royal we, you the royal uh, um, of Red Hat um, and Fedora of, of making some of that just just putting it out there and 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 making it easy to find and accessible um, um, just to add, can I add something there, I think that one problem we've had is that documentation in any open source community is um, uh, sometimes less than fully optimal. Um, and so I've been trying to write you know, Linux Weekly News articles um, as we've gone through Bootstrap, as we've gone through, I'm going to write an article series soon, I hope, on um, 
uh, how to fix uh, use of atomic functions on V5 systems so we can get people to clean this up. But um, one of the problems is documentation, and we're trying with the wiki, but you know, again, the, the canonical wiki, the Lenaro wiki in particular, is very helpful to us. And I think Lenaro is doing a really good job in documenting, and we want to collaborate on that more. And I, and I think that that's it. We get along more than we don't get along. That's right. And I think that's, that's great. Right. Now, I have to wind this down, and I appreciate you, you coming by and talking to me. Is there anything you want to give a shout out about before we end this interview? Well, I think I need to uh, give a shout out to the, uh, the team of parakeets outside that's uh, chirping away. Um, but uh, no, it's been, it's been great talking to you today and uh, hope uh, look forward to seeing you again at another Connect. Yeah, and I uh, hope we get to sit down and talk again, John. Very cool. Thanks.